set it up That's me in the corner That's me in the spot Like losing my religion this is Josh in New York? Yes, hello? How you doing, Josh? Good. I wanted to uh, talk about why I think you're wrong when you say the default position is non-belief. Okay. I think, this is, I think this is one of those cases where the default position is actually squarely in the middle of the two claims. Like it's claim one. What, what, what claims are we talking about? Okay, let, let, me, let me define the claims. Claim one would be there is no God of any, any sort, no transcendent being of any sort. Starman. And claim two would be that there is a transcendent being that okay. started everything. Here's the problem. You're talking about two claims. Right. Be belief necessarily addresses an individual claim. Not, right. Not, right. not two claims. Right. The default position would be to reject both of those claims. The, no, the first position is the default position that there's no God. That, that's what you believe. No, no, that's not the default position. Uh -uh. It's not what I believe. It's not what I've ever said. When we talk about belief, we are always necessarily addressing a single claim because you cannot necessarily demonstrate that you can have a single belief about multiple claims. So it's one claim. If the claim is a, some God exists, the default position, I claim, is not to accept that claim until it is supported. If the claim was no gods exist, the default position, I would say, is not, not to, to accept, accept that claim until there's sufficient evidence. Okay, okay. okay. What I'm really saying is that when, when somebody makes the claim that there's a God and then your response is that the default position is to reject that claim, I think what's happening is you yourself are subtly making your own claim even though you're not stating it. Because what you re you're making a claim that no God exists. But no, I'm not. Uh -uh. Actually, Josh, no. I will make that claim, but that's not what I'm doing when I reject, claim yeah. that when I reject their claim. But I think you're, you're, you're not fleshing it out. But it's I not my responsibility. If, if somebody is asserting a claim and I say, I don't accept that claim, it is not then my responsibility to flesh out what I do ex accept. For example, if somebody says A, I can just say not A, but I don't have to say no B, no C, no D. There are plenty of other options there. I am not asserting a position. I am responding to one. So, we, so, we, so you don't have any position of your own? I do. But he's saying that's not relevant to the, question, to the point about rejecting the claim until it's sufficiently supported. On, on the claim of existence, X exists, the burden of proof is necessarily always on the assertion that X exists. If there's only two options, then you're automatically saying Y exists, if you're saying X doesn't exist. No, because what, you were, what he was talking about before is that you could reject both claims. So how can there be, how can there not be a God and not be not a God? No, you no. can simply be saying, I don't believe either because there's insufficient data upon which but, to base but a I'm belief. I'm not talking about a specific hang, type of hang, God. Or hang on, I'm not either. Hang Wait, hang this on. could be any claim. It doesn't have to be a claim about God. Any claim at all, I can say there's insufficient data upon which to base a belief. And I can but then say... You'd be, if, you're, if you're rejecting the claim for it and, then, and saying the, the claim against it, then you'd be an agnostic. See, no, no because no. agnostic deals well, with knowledge, not belief. There are two possible truth values. God exists. God does not exist. That's it. They're mutually exclusive. Those are the two possible actual truth values. Now... We're talking about belief values. Do you believe this claim? No. Do you believe this claim? No. It's possible to not believe either because belief is the acceptance that a claim is true. There's two different levels here. There is, X is ne either X or not S. Is X is necessarily the claim. God or no God is necessarily the actual truth assessment. That's a, a valid dichotomy but your belief about that situation is not limited to those two options. And because it's well, not well, limited... I don't see another possible option. Rejecting both claims. Rejecting both claims is unsupported. Here. Here. Okay, so then you would no, say, no, stop. Stop, Josh. Gosh. He's going to give you an example here. here. All right. I flipped the coin. There are only two options. Is it heads or tails? You're asking me or you're... Do you believe that it's heads? No. Do you believe that it's tails? No. But I rest my case. 
I understand what you're saying, but then I wouldn't call myself an atheist. Okay. I call myself agnostic. The moment you say you do not accept that the God exists, that you do not accept that it's heads, you are an atheist. And whether or not you accept its tails is irrelevant. Because okay, but I think there's a flaw in the analogy. I really do, because the difference is that whether it's heads or tails, it has like, you, you don't know that. In this case, right. when you're thinking about is there a God or not, if there's not a God, that, that there's an automatic weight that it has to be if there wasn't a God. Is there an automatic weight? It has to happen. With heads or tails, it, it doesn't matter what it is. Okay, let me change this up, because I dealt with this last night. In my hand, there's either a quarter that is heads up, or there's something else. Okay. Tracy says that there's a quarter that's heads up, and that this must necessarily be the case, and we'll just call her theist. Okay. I, don't, I don't believe her, so I'm going to say I'm an atheist, because I don't believe her claim. But in this and case, I haven't said a thing about what I might think is in that hand. And in this case, you're, you're right, but the analogy doesn't work, because in this case, if it's not head, there's no, if it's not head, it, can, it doesn't say anything. It could be anything else. In this case, in the other case, if there's not a God, that's, saying, that's making a statement of, a, of its own. Because then it's saying a whole bunch of things if there's no God. It's saying that it, you're making claims, by saying that you don't believe in a God, you're making a whole lot of claims even if you're not stating them. No, no I, you're not. No, okay, okay. From what you're saying, when you say you're making a lot of claims subtly but without stating them, um, for what I think you mean, I'll actually go ahead and agree with you. But that's not the point. The default position is to not accept a claim until there is sufficient evidence. For the claim, God exists, I have not seen sufficient evidence to accept the claim, and therefore I reject it. That does not mean that I also accept yeah. the claim that there are no gods, because that's another claim that has to be supported by its own evidence. And whoever is making the claim has the burden of proof. If I were to come on the show and say, there, is n there are no gods, I, and I'm trying to convince people of that, I have the burden of proof to demonstrate that. But fortunately, much like in a court of law where either the defendant is either guilty or innocent, um, you vote as a jury either guilty or not guilty. And it doesn't matter if you are just unconvinced of the person's guilt or if you actually think they're innocent, you are still in the not guilty camp because there is a default right. assumption. The default presumption is innocence until guilt is demonstrated. And with questions of existence, the default presumption is that it doesn't exist until existence is demonstrated. Okay, so you're saying that by being an atheist, you're not making any claim at all. You're only rejecting a claim. It's that it's not necessary to make a claim. Uh, you know, there are atheists who would say there's no God, but, but my point is, if I, if I define an atheist as someone who does not believe a God exists, which I would assume is unobjectionable, then the moment I say I don't believe claim A, I don't believe the coin is on heads, it doesn't matter whether I believe B or not, because I've just said I don't believe God exists. Now, I may or may not believe that there are no gods, but as soon as I say I can't accept that there is a god, even if, I'm, if, you know, even if I put yet at the end of that, that there's not yet supporting evidence, I could change my mind, but right now I can't accept that claim. I'm saying I don't believe your claim. I don't believe your claim that a god exists, and that makes me a non-believer, and a person who does not believe a god exists is an atheist. The, the only reason there's, there's any confusion over this at all is, that, is because this is a peculiar situation where you have people who are defining themselves with a label that is a response to something else. It's not like when the jury uh, walks out, they say, we're the non-guiltiests. It, it just, I mean, it doesn't happen. Um, that's why there seems to be confusion over this. Now, I, w I am one of the people who would happily tell you that my personal belief is that there are no gods. Now, I don't make this claim in the hopes of convincing anybody. I am, am happy to discuss why I have that, why I, why I actually have that belief. I don't claim this belief to, to an absolute degree of certainty, and I'm perfectly willing to be wrong. The reason I don't mention it is because it doesn't matter. I'm, it doesn't matter that I'm in the innocent camp. I'm in the not guilty camp, and that's the only thing that matters. What if you reversed it and, and said, there's no God? And you have been, then you have to be in the not guilty camp and say there's not evidence for that? Well, what you've done is you reversed the default position to where n normally we have, at least in this country, innocent until proven guilty. What you've done there is switched it to guilty until proven guilty.